Good morning. Today we continue our year-long Democracy 2018 interviews with the candidates for Michigan governor. This morning, we shine our spotlight on two libertarians, one a businessman, the other an educator and skilled tradesman, Bill Jelano of Grand Rapids and John Tater of Redford. Let's begin in alphabetical order with Bill Jelano. It's Sunday, July the 29th. I'm Chuck Stokes, and this is Spotlight. You're in a historic Michigan primary. Two libertarian candidates squaring off against each other. This has never happened before in this state. Yeah, since the Democrats and Republicans really rewrote the rules in 1932, no minor party that had qualified as a major party has ever had a competition. Mm -hmm. um, of the six times that it happened, only once, and that was after uh, George Wallace qualified the American uh, Party, uh, American Independent Party, I think is what they were called. So in 1970, they ran a candidate. But otherwise, they've never even run so a candidate. So why do you think that's happening now? Is that a sign of anything? I do think so. I, I think that the, the entire election cycle in 2016 was an indication of how much dissatisfaction there is with the two-party system. What's the biggest difference between you and your libertarian opponent? Well, um, I've been involved with the party for a long time in a very close level. Um, I've been a two-time chairman of the party and been um, very involved. Now, that really just speaks more to our involvement in the party and the growth of the party movement. Um, you know, we have some specific issues um, that we disagree on. Um, I like to say that my goal is to, to win the future. Um, you know, he talks a lot about... You guys like each other. We do, we do. I, you I haven't been running uh, attack ads against each no, other? No, and even if we had the resources to do that, I wouldn't do that. John's somewhat of a constitutional scholar, um, and he talks somewhat about the, the libertarian principles and how important it is for us to, to adhere to small government. Um, you know, I've, I've really... You think he's in broadly. this race to um, uplift the Libertarian Party, or do you think he's in this race for different reasons? Well, again, I've, I go with the Gary Johnson principle here, not to characterize what others are doing, but really to focus on what I would do. And so I look at John's participation as, as certainly made it more interesting for the media. Uh, having that competition allows us to talk more about what libertarian You're values are. You're getting more are. attention from the We're media. Getting a lot more attention, and if I was the only candidate in the race, I don't think we would get as much. So to that extent, I think I'm glad that he's here. Um, I do think uh, the kind of uh, proposals that I've made have been more serious and more comprehensive. I always invite people to come to my website, which is cometogethermichigan.org. Um, that domain was chosen very carefully because I do believe that that is at the heart of the problem we have in Lansing. Is uh, I talk about how the two-party system, they almost act like gangs. Um, you know, I, I don't know who decided that one party would be red and the other one would be blue, but it turns out those are the colors. Yeah, they call us a purple state. <laughs> well, but those are the colors of the bloods and the crips. And, and I think that political parties often act very much like gangs. They protect each other. They cause a lot of damage on the way, and they really don't care what anybody else thinks. And what's unfortunate is that good ideas don't get a good hearing. It really depends more on who it came from. All right, there are a lot of things that we'll have a chance to talk about today. If I said single out the single most important thing you would want to do if elected governor, what would it be? Well, I believe in prison reform, and that works in conjunction with the fact that we have an initiative on the ballot to legalize marijuana. Um, I believe that we have sufficient resources to do the things we need to do in Michigan, but we need to stop doing certain things. And the two that I've really focused in on, number one is prison reform. The fact that the drug war and this sort of low-hanging fruit, we've been able to uh, push a lot of people into the prison system for the drug war, uh, marijuana convictions, uh, low-level drug crimes. Where, and so what I've said is if we redirect some of those monies, gosh, we might even fix some roads. You think that it would help reduce the prison population? Absolutely, and, and I'm not alone in thinking about that. Many academics have, have outlined the fact that Ohio, Indiana, and Illinois have 30% fewer people in prison per capita than Michigan. And I don't believe that Michigan is more criminal by nature. I think we have a prison industry. It kind of comes back to build them and they will come. So we built a lot of prisons and now we filled them up. Uh, what do you say to people who don't support your position and they say if we legalize marijuana in terms of recreational use, 
that that's just the gateway to other drugs and more crimes. It starts with marijuana um, or wherever you want to label it, and then it moves on to bigger and harder drugs. Well, I think that's the song and dance of the past. First of all, we don't have to talk in theory anymore. Marijuana has been legalized in Colorado and Washington for a while now, and the boogeyman hasn't come out of the closet. Uh, California is now legalized. It, we really have a tidal wave coming, and if Michigan does not legalize marijuana, not only are we not respecting freedom, we're also missing some opportunity. So I, I, I think that there's no uh, good evidence that shows that that's true. And I point to uh, people like uh, Michigan native Dr. Sanjay Gupta, who talks about how marijuana has some positive benefits. And, and I believe it's a natural right. You know, libertarians talk a lot about natural rights, um, the natural right to protect yourself with gun ownership, the natural right to be the king in your own castle and be left alone. And, and that's an important principle of libertarianism. We're going to talk about schools and roads and jobs when we come right back with Bill Jelano. He is a libertarian candidate for Michigan governor. We hope you stay with us. And welcome back to Spotlight. Uh, Mr. Jelano, how would you create jobs? Well, I don't believe government creates jobs, but I think there's some things we can do to facilitate the opportunity for jobs to come to Michigan. The business creates jobs? I do. I do. And I think, I think what we in government... Government plays a role, don't they? Even Absolutely. if it's a support role, I mean, they can, make it, uh, they can make it more difficult, they can make it easier. You bet. And so my, my signature uh, issue, the drop the cap, is about ensuring that we create a, an environment, a tax environment, that makes Michigan an attractive place for people to be. Sure. And you may recall we recently went through this Amazon auction where we, how much are we going to hand out to a company? Rather than doing that, what I would rather see us do is make it more of a level playing field for everyone. And so by making Michigan an attractive place for jobs to come to, you know, you look at California and New Jersey where they have very, very high tax rates. These are not the kind of places that big businesses want to locate. So I would like to see Michigan keep its tax rates low and make them equivalent for everyone, not to give out special breaks to anyone. And in doing so over time, businesses will want to be here. This comes out of uh, your relationship and your respect for what Dick Headley did. Uh, well, everybody knows the, I was the, really the fortunate Headley Amendment. To, yeah, I was really fortunate to know him when I was young. I was involved in the JCs and over at Alexander Hamilton Life Insurance where he was in charge for a while. He sponsored opportunities for, for us to, to uh, run these projects in the JCs, and I got to know him. And uh, I, I wear a, a pin related to my belief in volunteerism, which is a big element of what libertarians are about, is getting involved in our community and not expecting government to do everything for us. Um, and so it, it really requires active citizenry. So do you do a lot of cutting taxes? Um, I, I would like to start with making sure we cap the limit. Uh, eventually, yes, I... But in I, order to cap the limit, then you've got to bring some costs down, so that probably means cutting out some taxes, right? Well, in, initially, in fact, right now, the limit is $10 billion above what we're currently spending. And after the change, it would still be $5 billion. So if we had more revenue come in because we had more businesses move to Michigan, there's still some room on the upside there. What do you see as key waste areas that you say, okay, we can do without that, or we can certainly do with a big reduction? In okay. That? Well, first and foremost, we talked about prisons. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's about $3 billion that could be wiped out, or actually about $750 million out of the $3 billion budget that could be re. Uh, but, beyond, but beyond prisons? Well, uh, the strategic fund, and a lot of folks don't know what that is because it's kind of a quasi-government agency, um, but a big chunk of the budget is wrapped up in some things that I, we call crony capitalism. And the one that most people would know the best is called Pure Michigan. And I think that's pure BS. And, and let me tell you why. If business people want uh, people from around the country to come to the Lake Shore, come to Grand Rapids, come to Detroit, um, they ought to get together and do that and advertise. It shouldn't be put on the burden of the taxpayers. You know, folks that are having trouble putting food on the table or just getting to their jobs. And so this is one of those things where it's a big So if you saw Dan Musser, the, the owner of the Grand Hotel, who says that Pure Michigan is the best thing in the world that's happened for the Grand Hotel and, He's helping, wrong. and helping Mackinac Island and other places across the state, You'd look him in the face and say, you've got that wrong? You've got it wrong. And not only that, we shouldn't be supporting your venture. 
the, the fact is, is that um, lots of small business people don't get subsidies to succeed, and nor should they. You know, one of the most but important- But aren't these state assets that bring money, bring tourists into the state? No, they're private businesses. And that's just it, is ordinary folks don't benefit because someone goes to the recreation, recreational opportunities. And, and so I think that's part of what libertarians want to talk about is that in a truly free market, we shouldn't be handing out benefits for this company and that company. What we should say is create an environment that's equivalent for all and that you can compete. And I can guarantee you most small business people agree with me that they don't see the benefits of government handing out these funds. Um, one of the worst offenders that I found, because, uh, well, you may remember the film industry that Jennifer Granholm yes. tried to create. And, uh, you know, it, it created a very small benefit for a small, you know, for a certain group of people. The Republicans said, well, that's terrible, and they repealed most of it. But then they turned right around and they gave a, a company called Switch in the Grand Rapids area. There's a beautiful building that looks like a pyramid in Kentwood. And they passed a specific law to give them long-term benefits, tax benefits, to come to Michigan. And we just think that's wrong-headed. We get more letters about the condition of Michigan's infrastructure, particularly our roads and bridges and the potholes, than I think anything else that comes to mind. How would you fix Michigan's infrastructure? Well, and that's just it, is if we can move $750 million out of the prison system, we can fix a lot of roads. And that's on top of the budget we already have. So you believe there's not enough money in there to currently fix the roads and the bridges? I, I think there is not enough money to fix the roads. Our infrastructure has been neglected for a long time. And you know you can't just let things go for a long period of time. Well, Bill Jellino has captured your attention. There's a lot more. We'll continue our lengthy interview with candidate Jellino on our website. Go to WXYZ.com to hear what he wants to do for the state of Michigan. Coming up, here on air, Libertarian, John Tater. And welcome to Spotlight. John Tater, he is a Libertarian candidate for Michigan governor, one of two, and he's with us today on Spotlight. Mr. Tater, welcome to Spotlight. Well, thank you very much. It's a pleasure Mr. having Stokes. you. Appreciate it. Uh, this is a historic primary for the Libertarians. The first time in Michigan history, an old state, in which two Libertarians are squaring off for the right to get into that final. That is correct. That is correct. It's, we're kind of really excited about it. Yeah. Um, what's the real difference between you and your opponent? I tend to want to bring back the republic that we were given when our founding fathers were uh, in charge and um, bring back the, the thought process that we are the sovereign, citizen, we are the sovereign uh, being citizens of this country, mm -hmm. uh, citizens of the state. And um, I believe that there are a lot of problems within the system because they have gotten off track from that idea that we are the sovereign and that they are our servants. They have at this point in time now in Lansing. they being who? Republicans and Democrats? Yes. Or, your, or your libertarian opponent? No, the Republicans and Democrats. Okay. Uh, I'll get to the him in a minute. Uh -huh. But uh, the Republicans and Democrats have believed now that they're in charge and that they're controlling the show. And they're really not. We, are the, we control the show, or we should be controlling the show, which requires an education. And you say republic as opposed to the other word a that democracy. we hear a lot, a democracy. Yeah, democracy. So you believe Democrats and uh, Republicans are more about a democracy, which would be, in your terms, more about politicians and politics than a republic, which is controlled by the people, if I interpreted that correctly. Absolutely, I agree. Uh, the problem with the democracy is that if we had... 51% of the vote, we could outvote the 49%, they're going to have to follow what the 51% say. And that's not what a, what a republic is. A republic is we have certain unalienable rights, inalienable rights that cannot be taken away by anybody. That may be a little more of an argument in the general uh, when you're squaring off against the Democrats and Republicans. Right now, you have to I, get past your libertarian opponent. And so within the libertarian party, and those who vote libertarian, why should they vote for you and not your opponent? Because the opponent wants to uh, 
continue the system as it is, just adjust it. Just adjust the uh, checkers on the checkerboard rather than say, you know, that these issues are, are wrong. Example, uh, get rid of the MPSC because the MPSC is not a, what we call a de jure constitutional. It's not based on the Constitution. The MPSC has been an organization that's been set up by the legislature for the purpose of being a buffer against the legislature. So my idea would be to get rid of them and put the, get the legislature back on track as to what they're supposed to be doing, and that's controlling the utility companies. All right. Uh, and the smart meters, you're opposed to that? I am. Uh, I'm opposed to it because they have not done the research, and uh, DT has not done the research for the health issues. Uh, they say that there is no medical health issues, except I run into people every day that are having his issues from the smart meter, breaking out in body rashes, not being able to sleep at night, high uh, uh, blood pressure. I know just somebody recently that ended up with a pacemaker. Now, they didn't have the pacemaker, didn't have any heart issues until after the smart meter was installed. You ran unsuccessfully for the U.S. House of Representatives in 2012 and 2014. Correct. Uh, a skeptic would say, well, if you didn't win those elections, and that was for a smaller number of people, one congressional district, versus the entire state, why should they support you running to be the chief executive officer of this entire state of Michigan? The reason I didn't win back then is because libertarians were just getting, gaining strength in popularity. There's a lot of people that had no idea what libertarian meant. Some people thought libertarian meant liberal, which it absolutely does not. It means liberty to the people, small constitutional government. And uh, that philosophy has been, you know, gaining momentum over time. While I was gaining signatures, gathering signatures, and I was in the field myself most of the time, those people said, hey, I'm tired of the Democrats and Republicans. They promise all of this stuff. They promise they're going to fix the roads. They haven't done anything. They're, they've been taking money. They keep raising taxes, but they don't perform their duties for the people. All right. We need to take a little break. We'll come back. We'll pick up. We'll talk about some of the key issues okay. that you want the voters to be concerned with. We'll be right back with John Tater, one of the Republican I'm mean, sorry, well, Libertarian. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, <laughs> we'll redo that. Libertarian candidates for Michigan governor. We'll be right back. How will you create jobs if elected governor of this state? I really think that there's a lot of jobs to be had. Number one, we have a road issue. Number two, we have an infrastructure issue. We do. Those issues need people to be fixing those problems. How will you fix them? Well, the problem is that the money that's being, that should be allocated for roads and infrastructure have been diverted into other directions. We need to prioritize why we have a state government. What's the function of that government? And it's to take care of the infrastructure, the house, so to speak, their particular house that we live in, which is the state of Michigan. They need to re maintain, repair and maintain those issues. Is uh, there enough money currently in the budget to do it or do we need to no, there's tax there's, more money on the people? There's plenty of money in the state. So are we uh, misappropriating want, the money? Absolutely. You want an example? Yes. <laughs> One of the examples is the new Senate office building that was just purchased. The um, legislature bought a Senate office building for $41 million. This $41 million building was appraised for $12 million by the Lansing appraiser. Somebody pocketed $29 million. I know who did, and who? I don't know if, who. Yeah. Uh, the Boji Group. Uh, are you for or against this ambassador bridge over to Canada and with our largest trading partner, Canada? I've been bantering that idea around for a while. Okay. I'm kind of against that, uh, the, the other bridge. Why? Uh, why? Because I think that uh, there's something called the international highway that they're trying to run up from Mexico across through the states, through Michigan and into Canada. And uh, I'm not quite sure we want that. 
uh, traffic to be uh, routed through our state. I'm not sure it's going to benefit Michigan. You're more I, I need a little more, more information, a little more history on that. You're comfortable with the uh, Maroon family continuing to own the current bridge that goes over and, uh, and that not being a government-owned bridge? I'm really against the public-private partnership philosophy, corporations and governments merging. Uh, they should be separate, uh, and, and they seem to be very much uh, married together in many aspects. We're talking about DTE, we're talking about uh, um, uh, the telecom industry, we're talking about maybe the bridge. That needs to be looked into a little bit better for me as far as I'm concerned. I'm not really uh, up to speed on that to argue that or co a comment yeah. much further on it with you. A part-time part, part legislature for or against? I am absolutely for a part-time legislature. I want to get rid of the Senate. You want to know why? Yes. <laughs> because the Senate has no constitutional function. And we should clarify, the Michigan Senate Michigan, you're talking uh, about. Absolutely, Michigan Senate. We know why we have a federal Senate, or we should. We should have a federal Senate because the senators of the state of Michigan uh, or the state of Michigan should choose the two senators that go to Washington to uh, represent the state of Michigan. But in the Michigan Senate, there is no function for them. There is no function in the uh, Constitution. And when I, in fact, asked the senator what his job was, and, and he was kind of confused. So says, you believe they duplicate what the exactly. Michigan House of Representatives They do. do. They duplicate the Mich Michigan House of Representatives. And why would we be paying two people to do the same job? Do you worry in a part-time legislature that uh, you're giving more power to the lobbyists who may have more experience and more influence than uh, politicians and public servants who are just coming to legislate on a part-time basis? I would like to see a new oath of office. And that new oath of office I actually uh, uh, copied from the Organic Act of 1871 that basically says uh, not only do you, will you uphold the Constitution of the United States and the state of Michigan and the laws of the state, but if you get caught ca taking a bribe or if you get caught taking money or promising anything, that will be a criminal offense. Like the Libertarian candidate before him, now go to our website at WXYZ.com to hear my entire interview with candidate Tater. We thank both of the candidates for spending time with us today. You can see all of my gubernatorial candidate interviews on our website. Go to WXYZ.com. I'm Chuck Stokes. Have a great week.